one of the ways that we travel or, or supplement and complement our travel is doing house sitting, pet sitting. If you haven't ever considered it, I would recommend it. You know, the, the, the um, website we use is trustedhousesitters.com and they go through a vetting process. I think you pay like $120 a year. They do background checks and everything. I started doing them last April, I think, was my first my first house sit in New Mexico. And not only has it allowed us to stay in some really nice houses, especially in the United States, it's allowed us to travel to places that we normally wouldn't really be able to afford to travel because of the cost of accommodation. So we've gone to places like Santa Fe, New Mexico, Boulder, Colorado, Durango, Colorado, um, Park City, Utah, and right currently we're in Barcelona, Spain, which is one of the most expensive cities in the world. And we've got, I think, two, we were able to say two nights, I think, at, here taking care of this, this little dog. So basically all we do is, you know, just watch the house, if, you know, take out the trash, keep the house cleaned up, walk the dog, feed the dog, this dog has to take a little bit of medicine, but it's not bad. Um, but it allows us also, after if, after we've been moving around quite fast, like whether we're camping or like right now we're in we're in Europe. So we arrived in Madrid on the twenty. We left Mexico. Let's start with we left Mexico City on the twenty third of November. Today is the 9th of December. So since the twenty third of November. We arrived in Spain on the 24th, and then we went to Gibraltar, Morocco. We did Lisbon, Portugal, Porto, Portugal, and then flew to Barcelona. So we've we've traveled quite extensively in the three weeks or so that we've been here. And what a house sit allows us to do, especially if there's one of any length of time, it allows us to rest and recharge our batteries before we make another big run. So we have a big house sit coming up. It's about 17 days in Amsterdam. And so between now and then, um, we're gonna go two days to Montpellier, like four days to France, to Paris, France. Uh, we're gonna go to Brussels, Belgium, Rotterdam, Holland, Rotterdam, Netherlands, and then to Amsterdam. So we're gonna be pushing pretty hard for the next 12 days before we're scheduled to arrive at our next house sit. But then we'll be there for 17 days and we can literally like do nothing for like three days if we want, which is probably what we'll do. We'll rest up. A lot of times these places at least have washing machines. Here in Europe, they don't all seem to have dryers. In the United States, they have washers and dryers. So you can get your laundry done. Um, you know, you don't have to pay utilities and you're not paying like here in Barcelona, it's ridiculous the cost of things, right? So even Airbnbs are really unaffordable long term. They don't look the dogs are saying hi to each other. They don't they don't have a good exchange, like a good value for what you get. And even <laughs> and even and even if you see something like that looks like it's a good value, like that they've got this little game they play here in Barcelona with the Airbnbs, and they do it in Portugal too, and they do it in a lot of places in Spain, but they'll charge, they'll put like the little tag on the, the screen will say like six, $16 a night, and you're like, wow, that's a good price to stay in Barcelona because most of the times they're like $60, $70, $80 a night. But when you click on the little tag, they'll have like... $50 cleaning fees, $27 administrative fees, and then they'll have a service fee taxes. So they run the price up like three or four times what it would cost you to stay several days at $16. I mean, it's ridiculous. So it makes something that you think is going to be affordable, sort of like staying in Central America or Colombia, and they make it unaffordable, and it should be it should be against Airbnb's policy for them to have deceptive business practices like that. But that's a whole nother video that I'm thinking about doing because I really need to put out a public um, message about the scam that Airbnb is allowing these people to run. It'd be better if you just listed the price and that way people knew what they were getting into. 
But anyway, so Airbnb is super expensive. So if you can stay in someone's house, watch their dog, and take care of their property, and you get to travel to places that you might not otherwise get to travel. Um, I get rejected a lot because I'm a white male and I have two kids and I'm in my 40s, late 40s, so I'm like public enemy number one right now, but I have really thick skin. So some people value that. Some people want families because they travel with their families. And some people want, you know, older, more reliable people they can depend on instead of having people in their house partying. That works to my favor sometimes. But honestly, like for every 10 or 20 um, applications I put in, sometimes people don't even answer me. Like I got rejected from one in France today. They never even bothered to email me or nothing. They just sat on my application for weeks. And then today, they just turned it down. They, they declined it. They, but they never said hello. They never thanked me for applying. Um, that's not always the case. Sometimes they'll still reach out to you and just say that, you know, they don't want kids in their house or, um, you know, whatever. They, they'll at least communicate with you. But a lot of times they don't. So you got to have a little bit of thick skin. You can't take it personal and they're probably doing you a favor you know and then you run up against things that maybe you don't want to like you don't want to deal with like people have five cats or you know or they're just real like crazy with their diet like we're vegetarian we don't want you eating any meat in our house you know they're they're ridiculous with some of their requirements whenever you're coming to take care of their their home for them so they can go on vacation with peace some of the other crazy stuff i've seen is um they don't want you going out during the day. They want you at their house all day, every day, so their animals don't get stressed out. So even if you come to a place like Barcelona, they don't want you going out doing any sightseeing or anything, right? So, so there's a lot to consider, but if you can handle it, like we've done, I think Barcelona, this, I think this is our 10th or 11th sit, and we got, like I said, we got the Amsterdam sit coming up. I'm looking for more sits after. I'm looking for sits in Germany, Italy, and then we'll move into Eastern Europe, you know, and there's there's places like there sits in places like India, Morocco, Mexico. You see them all over the place, Colombia. But you just have to be diligent, and then work on the timing of your travel with the timing of their sits, and everything. It can work out really well. It's worked out really well for us. We haven't had any bad experiences with our sits except one one sit we did. The, the homeowners had five cats that lived in the house, and that was a little too intense for me. I'm not a I don't mind a cat or two. One or two is fine. One is perfect. Two is okay. I can handle that. But five cats is just too much with the hair on everything. The amount of litter box work that has to be done. No, Nala. Sometimes like this dog, she's wanting to pull. And so sometimes they they can be a little they can be a little um rebellious but not bad like this is she's this one's a really good dog she's really calm she's really good in the house you just got to watch her with your food like if you leave food on the counter she'll jump up on the counter and then when she wants to smell something outside she'll pull hard on the leash and she's pretty strong even as short as she is she's a real solid dog but anyway all right so we're just walking around in this little park here in barcelona and I thought I would do another little vlog about house sitting while I'm, while, I'm walk, while I'm walking this dog or she's walking me. All right, we gotta get finished up because we're heading to France in the morning.